Good afternoon from Epcot. We're here today for the International Festival of the Arts, which started on Friday. Today's Monday. I don't know, there's all kinds of stuff that I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see the art, I'm excited to have the food, and I'm excited to, there's a couple of little scavenger hunts, and like hidden things around the park that I'm excited to see. So let's go inside and see what we can find. So the first thing that we noticed on the way in is the entire right-hand side of the entrance area is blocked off with the construction walls. They had already taken out the Leave a Legacy tombstones over there, but I guess they're going to improve it by adding in planters and stuff like they have on this side. Also, as a side note, when you come in, there is no way to go around the left-hand side of Spaceship Earth. It's all blocked off because they're doing a lot of construction back there. So everybody has to go over to the right. A lot of bottlenecks in Epcot right now. So the area to the left of Spaceship Earth is closed. The area to the right is open. You can see that it's very crowded over here, but there's also another little bypass that's open over here occasionally. We're gonna go take it and see where it ends up. Sort of over by the seas with Nemo and friends. Ooh, I like this because you can get some really interesting shots of Spaceship Earth from back here. So just another little quick wayfinding. Spaceship Earth, the entrance of which is right there. These are the bathrooms which are to the right when you walk in. And now we are headed down this pathway over here. It's a seating back here and all of the different Epcot logos. And then Edna Mode for some reason? I'm not really sure why she's there, but she's, uh, she's there. You know, there's just a sign here that says the magic of possibilities. And then a random hey hey on the wall. Monorail! So right, this building right here is the seas, and this is a new walkway that has never been opened before. And you can see there's a little sign here that says, dive into the seas, begin your journey. All kinds of different Nemo characters along this wall. It's pretty interesting because I don't really understand their, hey, how's it going? I don't really understand their idea of putting characters in over here because like these here with the Nemo characters make sense, but Everybody else doesn't. I mean, I guess there's going to be a Moana attraction here once the refurbishment is done, but why is she there right now? Maybe this is like they're saying, this is where the Moana attraction is going to be. And I kind of think it will be. It's going to be around here somewhere. And so this pathway kind of ends up over here by Coral Reef Restaurant. And this is not a place that is not like you could get to Coral Reef, but the wall used to be kind of, you can see right there where the new concrete is. That's where a wall used to be. And that all used to be backstage. And now it is occasionally a bypass. It's not always a bypass. It's not always open, but right now it is. Just so we're clear on their uh, their picking of characters, we've got the Seas, which makes sense, Nemo. And then we got Moana. And then we're back to Nemo. And then they had Edna Mode because uh, fashion. This is kind of exciting because I feel like we're experiencing the park in a new fashion because we don't normally come into the park from this direction. So we're looking back at the Seas with Nemo and friends. And if we're turning, that's the land over there behind the monorail beam. And there's an area over here that is a kids chalk art area where kids can come in and draw all kinds of chalk art on the ground like this. Oh, somebody drew a BB-8 and a little baby Yoda over here? It, calling him Dr. Trash? What? Baby Yoda is almost as popular in this chalk art as Mickey is. Okay, a little bit of wayfinding. There's the seas. We came in from like around the back back there. This is Innoventions, which is closed right now. This used to be the, like the Mickey and Friends meet and greet was in there. And then the land is over there and Journey into Imagination's back here. But we are going to turn back in this direction and head back towards the center area, back through this breezeway right here. All right, so, okay. Now we are back at the pin station here. There's Spaceship Earth. This is the entrance that the majority of people are coming in. And what we did is we kind of went back and around the backside of this building over here, then ended up coming through this breezeway. Also, this is where the Starbucks was. Completely gone. Club Cool's gone, Starbucks is gone, everything is gone right here. Wow. That was some fast demolition. I walked closer to Spaceship Earth and actually the pin station that I just showed you guys is directly behind me because I wanted to show you guys this flower work here for Festival of the Arts. It's beautiful. I like all the different colors. Okay, let's get out of construction land and head back to World Showcase on the other side of what used to be Fountain of Nations right here. Just one more look at all of the deconstruction. There's nothing left of that building, Fountain of Nations, or anything. And this is the former location of Mouse Gear. Mouse Gear is now in a temporary location on the other side of Electric Umbrella right here. But we're gonna go back to World Showcase through here. Oh no, I was slightly off in my preview video. I said that this was where the Paint by Numbers is gonna be. It's just right next to it. Dang, 
I thought this was the perfect spot. Nope, right over here. Also, this is a free activity available from 11 until 5 every day of the event. And once the painting is completed, they put it on display somewhere. I don't know where though. Ah, okay, so here's what it is. This is called the expression section. And this is where you get your paints and your paintbrush from. And then you walk all the way over here and they're painting all kinds of different colorful figments. This one looks like it'll be done today. Not very many squares left. I came over to see the merch, which we showed you guys in the preview video, but there's a couple things I wanted to find out the price of. Number one, this, uh, by the way, these are Tervis tumblers. That's the brand name. A lot of people are like, no, you're saying thermos wrong. It's a Tervis tumbler, $26.99. I do like this. It looks a lot better in the daylight too, I think. And then this purse, I was interested to see how much this one was. This was $39.99. And I like this purse. I like it a lot. It's very re reminiscent of old figment designs with the sparkles and everything. For $21.99, they have this whole mess of figment plushes. Oh, and I wanted to point out that the figment spirit jersey is $69.99. Find the perfect pigment with your pal figment. One of the things that's very popular at Festival of the Arts is they take famous paintings, like these are both Vincent van Gogh, and they allow you to put yourself in as a photo opportunity. There's an area over here called Chalk Full of Color. Some special guests have decided to join the festival fun from a poo to Jiminy Cricket. Charming chalk drawings of Disney characters are waiting to be discovered tucked around corners throughout World Showcase. How many can you find? That's exciting. It's like a scavenger hunt. And then they also have artists out here doing 2D chalk art on the sidewalk. There's a couple examples of some chalk art. Oh, there's Remy. And he says, go Packers. There's Miguel. This is amazing looking. Oh, and the Sphinx. This is interesting stuff. I like how they have Disney characters kind of mixed in with classical art. Also, these are not the chalk Disney characters that we just learned about in the scavenger hunt type thing. When I see one, I'll show you. There's Anna and Elsa. And then I haven't seen Frozen 2, so I don't know what this character's name is. But one thing that's really fun is this artist like sections off squares that allows guests of Epcot to draw little sections in and then they draw in the character. So you can see people have put all kinds of different like there's an Olaf in there that somebody that an Epcot guest drew. And then they have another section of 3D chalk art. You can see it looks kind of strange from our angle but we'll go on the other side so you guys can see what it actually looks like in the correct way. You can see people are bending over and acting like they're building a snowman with them. Here it is. Makes it look like it can be 3D and somebody stands right there and it looks like they're like helping make a snowman, helping build a snowman. So here it is, we're getting into the meat of the festival. These are different artist booths and you can get just regular art over here from Disney Fine Arts or if you want to meet our Nichols, they might be here and this is where their specific art is being sold. When he plays, the Paraguayan harp appears to dance and sing. The Epcot International Festival of the Arts is pleased to present Victor Espinola. So he actually used to play at Animal Kingdom all the time. All right, let's look at some art and try some food. So you guys remember Trevor Carlton from when we had the media event, he made a figment and now he's made a Donald here. Also, I love this racing Mickey. That is amazing. So Minnie has moved her meet and greet over here where Daisy used to be. So if you're looking for a mini meet and greet, this is where you have to go. The first food station that we come to is Pop Eats. Let's see what they've got. Okay. The chicken sous vide, which we had at the preview, which was good. Uh, shrimp ceviche, I don't eat shrimp, so. The frangipan, which I thought was okay. This says that it has a Belgian chocolate. Okay, I thought it was dark chocolate. And I was like, wait a second, the one that I tried didn't have dark chocolate. And then the pop art, which looks like a pop tart, but it's popped art. Let's see what's over here. El Artista, Hombrenito, Hombrento. I don't know how to say anything. Here we got the Sope de Barbacoa. Ooh, pork belly with caramelized agave, a top pumpkin seed. Wow, okay, I don't know. Mm, maybe this beef. Let's try the beef. Okay, so here's what I got. This is the barbacoa beef. It looks pretty good. Doesn't look anything like the picture, but that's okay. I think that it'll still be tasty. What is everything? I didn't even 
I just know that it's barbacoa with some cheese, looks like some red onions maybe, or some cabbage on a little cake down here. All right, let's give it a try here. Ooh, I should have gotten a knife, I think. The little, like, cake is kind of hard to get through. Or the pastry on the bottom. What do you call that, a little piece of bread? Okay, here we go. That's pretty good. Wow. Okay, very flavorful. The beef doesn't taste like the best quality beef, but I think it goes really well with all the other flavors. It looks like I got some black beans in there too. Yeah, that's good. Let's get some of these like cheese and cabbage and lettuce on the top here. Mmm. That's really good. The beef's super tender. I would eat this again. This is delicious. The, uh, the vegetables on top add like a nice fresh flavor to it. Wow. Yeah, very delicious. I do recommend this one. But I do recommend getting a knife when you get it because that will help out a lot. Hmm. Yeah, that's real good. But my only complaint, and this isn't really a complaint, is that this is Festival Yard, so it's supposed to be like more artistic looking. It's not as artistic as everything else that I've seen, like the Frangipan or something like that. But it is good. Oh, oh my. It's kind of busy today, isn't it? So if you guys remember back earlier in the video, we were talking about how they have different characters spread out around the park as chalk art. This is what we were talking about. This Dante right here, that is the chalk art that they were referring to that you're out looking for, like a little scavenger hunt. There's no prizes or anything, but this is kind of a fun little scavenger hunt around the park. Interesting to find them because there's a bunch of them all over the place. So the mariachi band is playing over here. This is Mariachi Cobre and it is causing quite the backup here. Over here at the China booth, which is called the Painted Panda, they have spicy beef shumai and some char siu pork bun. Sounds good. I might get both of these actually. Why not? Whoa. 1050. Holy macaroni. Here is my shumai and then my char siu. These look pretty good actually. I had a very hard time finding a spot to sit down and eat something so I'm on top of a trash can here in the China Pavilion. I had to try to find a nice spot to set up the little tripod so I can try these. All right we're gonna try the spicy beef first. See what we can try here. They come on a little pickle but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the, the whole thing and the pickle in my mouth. The outer casing is crunchier than I thought it was going to be. Spice is not... So, it does have spice to it. It's not a lot of spice, and it kind of hits you after you've eaten it, but it is a little bit spicy, like if you're not used to a spicy type of food. It does have a good flavor. I wish I could get the, the pickle in there too, because the pickle would really go well. I'm going to try to do like two bites here. I'm going to do one with the entire bun here, and then one with the pickle. That's where it's at. Yeah. If you get this, eat the whole thing and a pickle with it. Delicious. But yeah, the the like the actual like outside shell is a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. Like crispier, almost stale. I don't know, I'm losing my trash here. But not not stale. I don't know, it's like it's because it was sitting inside of like a chafing dish for a while. Maybe that's why it tastes like that. I don't know. It is good, and I would eat it again. Oh, people are clapping. And I think the spiciness is, I don't know if you guys can even see that, but inside they put like a little bit of like a, some sort of white sauce in there. I think that's the spicy bit. But like I said, I would definitely recommend if you get this, eat it with the pickle rather than just by itself. Let's try this pork belly. Looks like it's got some sort of like uh, fruit sauce almost on it. Oh, it's like a sweet and sour sauce. Huh. It's pretty good. The I feel like the, the bao bun is a little bit sweeter than I would like. 
but it's not it's not bad. Like it is good. I like the beef better than I like this pork. I'm used to like a crispy pork belly. Crispy pork belly is like my jam. That's where it's at. This is good. It has good flavor and everything, but I like the crispy pork belly better. Hmm. That pork almost has like a uh, like a gamey taste to it, which is interesting. I don't know why it would. Pretty good though. So so far, everything that we've had has been delicious. But there are a few things that I liked better. Like I like the food from Mexico, the barbacoa, better than I like the pork belly. And then I like the beef better than the pork belly, but not better than the barbacoa, the spicy beef. So. Hmm. Now, those are my reviews. Here's another one of those chalk drawings with Mushu. He's actually in the same spot that he was last year, just outside of this little curvy wall, outside of the China Pavilion. There's a German band playing over here. The German rock band. Over here at Cuisine Classique, see what they've got. Beef short ribs, I love me some beef short ribs. Seared Corvina, that's part of the, the art stroll or the, the color stroll and you can see that's what this sign means. What should I get? Caramel tart, topped with cream puffs? That sounds and looks pretty good. And then the artist palette, jumbo chocolate chip cookie. Hmm, I am feeling some dessert and I've done this one before. Let's try this one, let's try this tart. All right, I ended up getting both. Here's the tart, I like this. I like that they added this little splash of color to the top. That's beautiful. And then there's the cookie. The cookie is real big. I thought that this was like a chocolate brush. It's just a plastic brush, so that's kind of a waste. Eh, still looks good. It does look like a palette, like an artist palette, and you can kind of paint it any way you want to. Or if you're feeling real crazy, you can take some of these colors and put them on that. So first off, we're gonna try the tart, and this is, has like a, a caramel on the top of it, and I'm not really the biggest fan of caramel, so I don't know what this is gonna be like. I'm interested to try it though. I'm gonna get a little bit of chocolate on there because I know that I like chocolate. Oh, that's really good. It almost tastes like a Boston cream pie. There's some sort of cream underneath the caramel that really helps out with the flavor of it. Let's try it with one of these, these puff pastries or these cream puffs on top, see if I can get also, it's not really overpoweringly caramel either. I thought it was gonna be because I don't really like caramel. Oh man, this is sort of like almost caramel. Like a mix between caramel and butterscotch. You know how butterscotch is like almost caramel, but caramel's caramel? This is good. I did not expect to like this at all, but I like it. Huh. There you go. It is delicious. I suggest that you get this tart from the Germany area. Here is the chocolate chip cookie. I don't anticipate this tasting very much like anything other than a regular chocolate chip cookie. But let's give it a try. That's good. Tastes like a chocolate chip cookie. I think the fun part about this is like trying to paint the, the paint on there. Because it does look like an artist palette and they do give you a brush. And you can kind of like paint however you want to using the icing. This isn't edible though. So here's something that's new is over here in the glass carving, the old glass carving stand outside of Germany is no longer a glass carving stand. Now it's a glass fusion stand. So check this out. It's called interactive glass art. So you can make all kinds of different pieces. Like you can make a picture frame, you can make a, a night light, and these are all different shapes that you can add to it. Kind of pick them all out and then arrange them however you want them. And then they fire them together and they ship it to you. Here's some examples of stuff that you can do. You could do a picture frame. You could do uh, little dishes here, like little glass dishes and maybe a, a Christmas ornament, smaller glass dishes. And like I said, these things are, they were just a white picture frame and then somebody picked out these different pieces to add to it, kind of add a little bit of flair. Here's another one of the photo ops. This is the birth of Venus. So you could stand inside and act like Venus in this shell my favorite thing that just happened was some kids were in there taking photos and before the boy kid left, he, he poked this guy's belly button. He's like, boop, boop, and then he left. Over here by the Italy section, we've got 
I have no idea. Sh- salad of poached shrimp in Sicilian lemons. Ooh. And golden chicken drumstick stuffed with ricotta cheese and pomodoro sauce. That sounds good. Well, I thought about getting the chicken, but they're all out of chicken for right now. They said they'll have more chicken in about 15 minutes, so maybe we'll check back. Just passing by another artist booth, and this is James Coleman. These are pretty neat. They're almost like impressionist versions of Mickey and Minnie. And then we've got Rodel Gonzalez. These are neat. Ooh, we got some art from Rob Kaz. And if we turn, he's actually painting something right now. This is amazing. (laughs) A rare sight over next to the American Adventure Pavilion. We've got some characters out here. Who do we got? We got Wendell over here. We got Rafiki, we got Liverlips. And then who else? They said there was four characters. I'm only seeing three so far. Who's the last one? And then down here, there's Minnie. So tonight for Disney on Broadway, we've got Kissy Simmons and Alton Fitzgerald White, who are both in the Lion King production on Broadway. So I don't know if you guys can see them because of the glare, but there are three show times, 5.30, 6.45, and 8, and that's what time you can come and watch them sing here in the American Adventure Theater. So as with all of the festivals, there is a scavenger hunt. And we showed this a little bit in the preview video, but I wanted to show you guys, $7.99 plus tax, and this is what you get. And then you have to go around and put stickers in all of the different areas once you find each piece of artwork with figment in it. Like figment has been added to it in some way. And then once you've completed them all, then you get to go and pick a puzzle, one of four different puzzles to take home as a prize. Over here in the America Adventure, there's a booth called the Artist Table. And they've got Beef Wellington. I'm excited to try this Beef Wellington because Beef Wellington is difficult to make, so I'm interested to see how this turns out. Okay, well, the line is super long for the America Pavilion, so we will probably be back another day to try this Beef Wellington. There's so many other dishes we haven't tried yet, so it'll definitely be another trip out to Festival of the Arts. It is definitely a busy day here. It is a holiday weekend, so I would imagine that maybe tomorrow will be less busy, and maybe later this week will be less busy. So hopefully the next time we come back, it won't be this busy. Over here by Japan, we've got Goshiki, and they've got the Taiyaki. Definitely gonna be trying this one again this year. It wasn't my favorite last year, but Maybe they changed the recipe a little bit? You never know. Sushi donut sounds good too, and vegetable goyoza also sounds good. Hmm, I'm just gonna get the taiyaki though. So there it is, there's my taiyaki. It's got a little bit of whipped cream in there, and there's a strawberry on the other side. All right, let's try this taiyaki. So I know that this has like red bean paste in it, so I know that it's gonna be kind of like sweet baked beans. I always forget. Cause like I, I get this every year and I'm like, oh man, it's gonna be good because it looks good, the idea of it sounds good, but you gotta have, like, it's like red bean is like an acquired taste, I feel like, because you want this to be chocolate on the inside. It looks like it's gonna be chocolate on the inside. It is not, it's beans. They are sweet beans, but they are like 100% beans, like consistency of beans, consistency of refried beans. Still not good. (laughs) Dang, I always want this to be so good but it's not. Oh well. Hmm. So I just finished it up and it is bizarre to me how badly I wanted that to be chocolate. Chocolate on the inside of that would have been primo. Like the outer crunchy casing, whatever that is, the baked uh, pastry type thing, delicious, super crunchy, great flavor. If it had chocolate inside of it, That would be almost a perfect dessert. Over here by the Morocco Pavilion, this is where the spin art bike is, where you can do the spin art. Picking four colors out. And she's squirting a little bit in. The bike doesn't even have to pedal that fast. This drum will actually keep all the paint inside. Ooh. There still is some more food that we haven't tried yet, but I'm kind of full and it's still very crowded here. So I think I'm gonna call it a day and start to head out. I found a board describing the colorful cuisine color walk and it tells you all of the different dishes that you have to get in order to complete. And then finally, the complimentary culinary treat at Decadent Delights Showcase Plaza. I have no, are those cookies? They might be cookies, maybe. Not really sure what they are. 
We'll find out one of these days because I did find out that if you have an allergy and say you can't do the Corvina or the Scallop, you can do two of one thing. So like if you get the deconstructed BLT, you can get two of those and that counts towards one of your Corvinas. So there you go. So there you have it. That was our trip out to Epcot for International Festival of the Arts. I love this event. Had so much fun. The food, most of it was good except for the Taiyaki because that was just, I don't know, it not needs to be an acquired taste or something like that for sweet beans. I wish it was chocolate. I know that it's not, but I still try it every year. But I don't know. All, everything else that we had today was delicious. All of the art was amazing. The music so good. The merchandise is good for this event. I just like this event a lot. I wish it was a lot longer. Fantastic event. Good times. I highly recommend you guys come out for International Festival of the Arts. And with that being said, we are off. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Well, I'm Steve. And Faith, we're snowbirders from South Dakota. And now it's time to, to pay, pay the, the price. price.